Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. Uh, so I scratch built this combat robot right here and it took me months to complete it. This video is the full build experience, so let's get to it. I'll begin this project by taking some random laser cut MDF pieces. Uh, this is 3mm MDF or uh, an eighth of an inch thick MDF. And I'll start to glue some pieces to get a receiver glue and baking soda. My idea right here is to combine these shapes into some plates that I can glue together to start forming the body of the robot. This black material right here is styrene and it is super easy to cut with a snap knife and it glues well to the MDF with the CA glue. After a while you can see that I already have something that looks like a robot and now this piece right here is from a dead printer and I'll create the waist of this robot with it. Right here I'm closing the front of the body with another piece of black styrene. Ok so now that I have the basic shape for the body done I'll apply a coat of primer by brush. The primer coat will help to put everything together and help me to see the proportions of the robot. With more random laser cut MDF pieces, I'm putting together a basic structure that I'll glue to the front of the robot. This structure will later hold a couple of arms in the front of the robot. And while I'm here, I'll also add this air vent right here, which is laser cut MDF and some griblies. But now let's think about the geometry of the legs. I had this project for a while in my collection and I decided to put that to use. So I'll, I'll, I'll put this leg together. These are also some laser cut MDF pieces and I'll just uh, repurpose them uh, for this project. To make sure that I have joints with enough strength, I'm using some big bolts to create some axles. I'll also create some basic structures uh, to add to the leg and give it detail. Right here I'm adding some details with some laser cut pieces that I made exactly for this purpose. And I'll use this wooden ball right here to create a ball joint for the ankle of the robot. With the basic shape of the body done, I can start trimming some corners and adding and removing things as I wish. The front of the robot wasn't interesting as I wish, so I decided to create this corner right here, which I'm covering with a piece of styrene. Now I'll add some panel lines to the top of the robot with a snap knife and some other tools. I'll also drill some holes and add different types of details to the whole surface. This great piece right here by the way is a button from a dead printer but I'm gluing it upside down onto the surface. But there are tons of other types of gribbles that I'm using right here for detailing. This is a combat robot so it needs some rocket pods and I'll use these laser cut pieces right here to create them. I'll glue some plastic balls in between a couple of laser cut pieces. They'll look like there are rockets that are still on the rocket pod. At this point I decided to leave one hole open to, to make it seem like this rocket was shot before. This plastic gribbly right here goes in the back of the rocket pod and now I just have to make the other one for the other side of the robot. And I'll attach them to the side of the robot with screws. The dead webcam radar was too close to the rocket pod, so I decided to create a couple of shields to protect it. 
These are some very interesting laser cut MDF pieces that I've made and that I'm trimming to the size I need. And this is the result. I have one shield protecting the dead webcam radar and two on the back of the robot. Now I'll use one side of a dead headset to create the ammunition box. With the basic shape done I can start adding details to it. Like this one right here, this is actually a porcelain piece that I'll glue to, to this metal mesh right here uh, to make it look like this is kind of a cool air vent. And this white piece right here is the place where the ammo belt will connect the ammo box to the Gatling gun. More surface detail like this one right here, I'll use this one later to guide some wires. Then I threw a coat of primer on it to, to see where I was going and I was happy with it. Now let's make the Gatling gun. So this black piece right here is from a jet printer and I'll use it as the main body of the Gatling gun. I just have to trim some features from it first and then I'll glue both pieces together with some CA glue. These uh, cool looking metal tubes I'll use to make the, the, well, the barrels of the Gatling gun and they're all glued to this uh, circular acrylic piece. The white piece is a medicine bottle and to the bottom of it I'll glue this laser cut acrylic piece right here to create the axle from the Gatling gun to the body of the robot. Now let's add some details to the surface of the Gatling gun. This piece right here will receive the ammo belt later and this one is kind of a shield that I've made using some gribbles and laser cut acrylic pieces. And then I threw a coat of primer at it to see how it was going and I was also very happy with the result. And later I made this sort of pneumatic arm right here to control the height of the Gatling gun. Okay, so now let's work on the radar, which is this piece right here, this dead webcam. Right here again I'm using some laser cut acrylic pieces and I'm also sanding it to create some flat spots on the sphere to make it look cool. I don't want this to look like a dead webcam at the end of the process, so I'm trimming this piece right here which holds the lenses. Now I'll put it back together and as always I'll apply a coat of primer to see how it is going. This right here is the arm that holds a flamethrower and I made it using some Wi-Fi router antennas and a combination of different griblies. On the back right here I wanted to create sort of a fuel tank and I'm using this Kinder Egg uh, plastic shell right here and I'm gluing it to this combination of laser cut MGF pieces and this is a metal, uh, actually an aluminum rod that I'm going to, to put around it. This right here is yet another dead webcam and I'm going to use it to create sort of an exhaustion system. Now let's talk about the ammo belt. Which is one of the most challenging pieces of this project. I do not own a laser cutter and so to make it I had to go to a public maker space. I've prepared the files on SketchUp, this design right here, and I cut a bunch of these same pieces. All of those which had to be sanded and then glued together. After a while I had a bunch of these doubles glued together and then I just had to throw a coat of primer at them. 
then I put all of them together with some electric wires making this cool looking robotic worm right here now I just have to attach it from the ammo box to the Gatling gun and now we can finally start painting it so I spent some time mixing some colors and I landed on these two and I'll begin by giving the whole robot a light gray coat of paint then I started masking the robot to create the geometric camo and I added the other shades of greenish gray to these areas When the paint was set, I removed this first layer of masking and I started adding other layers of masking to, to put the other colors in. In this case, an even lighter shade of green. On some smaller pieces, I started with a metallic paint first, then I painted uh, on the top of it with a light shade of green, and that light shade of green was then chipped for real with some sharp tools. You just gotta do that while the paint is still fresh and be careful and gentle with it. Now of course it's time to add the accent color and for this project I decided to go with orange. I painted some panels here and there, but I also decided to paint a whole leg segment with this accent color, to which I also did the fresh paint chipping. But I didn't do just that, I decided to also do the classic sponge chipping effect. With this effect, it's super easy to overdo it, but in this case, as this is acrylic paint, I just had to clean it later. When I felt I had a good amount of chipping going on, I could add another coat of glossy varnish and move on to the oil wash. The idea with the oil wash is to make the piece dirty and then clean it and repeat this process. And this right here is to show you guys all of the layers that went on this model. Always alternating glossy varnish in between layers and finishing it all up with some matte varnish. Just the painting process for this project took me several weeks, but this is the result. These are all pieces painted and ready to go. Next step was to add the finishing touches. So I first made the details from the radar. I glued them in place and then I bent a piece of acrylic to create the lens of the radar. I also added this DVD reader lens right here to this piece and then I started adding tons of wires and tubes to the whole thing. This process is very time consuming, uh, but it pays out at the end, the result is amazing. This robot is kind of tricky to put together because there are tons of axles and joints that are possible and bolts that need to be hidden. And this right here is the result, this is the combat robot that took me months uh, to put together and I really hope you like what you saw right here, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and as always, thanks for watching.